EMS systems have increasingly used ECG screening to rapidly identify patients with STEMI and direct them to primary PCI. The American Heart Association's Mission Lifeline has developed a process to identify patients that are appropriate for advanced cath lab activation from the field. The Los Angeles County EMS Agency has adopted this for our STEMI system. The purpose of this module is to discuss current data on field activations in Los Angeles County, introduce the field activation criteria to the SRC physicians, and describe the paramedic, MICN, and physician roles and responsibilities regarding patients with STEMI identified in the field. Multiple studies confirm that pre-hospital identification and activation of the cath lab reduces time to intervention, both first medical contact and door to balloon times. Studies on mortality have not been consistent, but a recent meta-analysis demonstrated 39% reduction in short-term mortality with pre-notification. Broad screening with pre-hospital ECG is beneficial because missed STEMIs in the field may be mistriaged to a non-PCI-capable hospital, causing further delay. EMS providers primarily use software interpretation to identify possible ST elevation MI. However, there are many reasons for software interpretation of STEMI on the ECG. False interpretations are common, particularly when applied to a broad population with a low STEMI prevalence. False positive interpretations are the result of non-ischemic ST elevation, artifact, and measurement error, among other things. Of the field cath lab activations in LA County from 2011 to 2013, only half went to the cath lab and 40% received PCI. While ECG transmission is very important to allow physician interpretation of the ECG before patient arrival, the capability by itself has not significantly reduced the false activation rate. Despite mandatory transmission of all STEMI positive ECGs and nearly 100% of providers capable of transmitting ECGs, transmission was acknowledged as successful by the hospital only 28% of the time and when it was successful, it only reduced the false positive field activation rate by 5%. These are the field cath lab activation criteria developed by Consensus and Mission Lifeline. They are intended to guide your decision to activate from the field. The receiving physician will discuss the patient presentation and the activation criteria with the paramedic to determine if field cath lab activation is appropriate. The criteria include the patient is aged 30 to 90 with pain for less than 12 hours, ECG shows more than 2 millimeters of ST elevation in two or more contiguous leads with a narrow QRS, heart rate less than 120 beats per minute, and no paced rhythm. Furthermore, the patient does not have a DNR, is not intubated, and is able to give informed consent. Finally, both the paramedic and the physician should agree on the diagnosis of STEMI. If the ECG transmission is available, this allows you to view the ECG while discussing with the paramedic, but is not required to apply the criteria because the paramedic is able to provide the necessary information from the ECG. Of course, it is ultimately the physician's decision as to whether or not to activate the cath lab from the field. The criteria are meant as a guide. The availability of the transmitted ECG adds further important information. In addition, the criteria are not meant to identify all true STEMI. Patients who do not meet field activation criteria may require immersion catheterization after expedited ED evaluation. The paramedic responsibilities are as follows. To acquire the ECG and note one millimeter of ST elevation in two contiguous leads and or a positive software interpretation for STEMI. Initiate transmission of the ECG and transport of the patient. Contact the physician at the receiving SRC to discuss cath lab activation criteria. Contact the base for orders as needed according to the treatment protocols and proceed to the ED bed or cath lab as directed by the SRC physician. The physician responsibilities are to respond to the paramedic call, discuss the algorithm criteria to determine if field activation is appropriate, and review the transmitted ECG as soon as it is available. If the criteria are met, follow the institutional protocols for cath lab activation. If the criteria are not met, perform an expedited ED exam and follow institutional protocols for cath lab activation as appropriate. Again, the criteria can be applied whether or not the ECG transmission is received. These criteria do not change the destination of the patient. By LA County protocols, all possible STEMI identified by the paramedics in the field are transported to the closest SRC. When the SRC is also a base, the MICN assists by requesting a physician to the radio to discuss the criteria for field activation with the paramedic, accessing the transmitted ECG, and providing medical direction as needed. 
This is the Medical Control Guideline 1303, which outlines the paramedic workflow for STEMI patients. It is available online at the LA County EMS Agency website, Pre-Hospital Procedures Manual 1300 series, under Medical Control Guidelines. As before, all patients with STEMI identified on the pre-hospital ECG will be directed to an SRC. In addition, paramedics are trained to identify ST elevation in contiguous leads and formulate an impression based on the patient's presentation and ECG findings. All patients with STEMI identified by software interpretation or paramedic impression will be directed to a STEMI receiving center. The paramedics will initiate transmission of the ECG and transport to the SRC while contacting the physician to discuss the patient's presentation and activation criteria. If the decision for field cath lab activation is made, the patient may be transported directly to the cath lab or come through the emergency department, depending on your hospital protocols. In a retrospective evaluation using criteria available on the ECG and pre-hospital record, those criteria alone eliminated more than 93% of false activations. Paramedic and physician impression is expected to reduce this further, and at least 30% of true STEMIs would be activated from the field. Again, the physician-paramedic interchange, as well as ECG transmission, can allow identification of more true positive STEMI from the field. To summarize the key points, field activation of STEMI improves outcomes. The addition of a specific tool, the activation algorithm, will reduce false positive field activations while allowing the maximum benefit to individual patients. Direct communication between the paramedic and the physician is central to the process. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly or contact the LA County EMS Agency Administrative Staff for assistance.